Hello, everybody. Welcome to another great episode of Distilled, Brewed, and Reviewed. My name is John. This is my world-famous sipping den. Down here, I do everything that has anything to do with alcohol and coffee. How cool is that? It's real cool, really. Um, the first comment of every video I do is always pinned because I have a link to whatever um, playlist pertains to what I'm reviewing. Uh, in this case, it's going to be a wine. It's going to be Italian red wine. But uh, just point out something about my playlist. Since I do everything has anything to do with coffee and alcohol, I have developed a playlist that is categorized and subcategorized in a way that makes it very easy for you to find everything I review in all those categories and have fun in those categories, checking everything out. I always challenge people to check out that playlist. I'm telling you, it's a work of art, and I should know. I uh, Because I did it. I did it. My What the hell is that? I did it myself. All right. Here it is. Somebody's been into it a little bit. Can you see? Someone's been into it. What is it? What is this? Rapasso? Well, if you watch this channel, you know that I love Amarone. Rapasso. Oh, and I love a wine so much, I can't think of a name right now. Style. But they're all kind of related. In this case, Rapasso, well, let's talk about it. Villa Cavarina Vineyards. All right. Paso Valpolicello. So this uh, winery, this wine is from Verona. Valpolicello is an area of Verona, Italy. It's the highest altitude winery in uh, Valpolicello. The soil is volcanic. Um, what else do I know about it? What else do I know? Oh, the grapes. Uh, Corvina. Corvina. Uh, Veronese. Uh, Rondinella and Asaletta. It's the four main grapes in this. The actual vineyard uh, is named after a villa on the property. Beautiful house. It was built in the 1700s. In the 70s, the 1970s, it was a famous restaurant. And then it was turned into a vineyard, the whole area with that house and everything, in the 2000s. Hmm. Uh, let me see. 1,840 vines an acre. Um, or 4,545 vines a hectare. What do you think of that? All right, let's get into it. Oh, the style. The style. The pasta. To make an Amberone, they take the grapes and they dry them. They air dry them for several months. Really concentrates the fruits and the flavors as those shrink into kind of a raisin, not quite a raisin. It's one reason why it's expensive. They're tying up their mind, picking the grapes, or leaving it for months, and they're losing a lot of the juice. It's not sweet, though, like you would think a raisin would be. It's usually a little higher alcohol, so turn that sugar into alcohol, but it is concentrated flavor. Now, when you get a Rapasso, also known as a double fermentation, what they'll do a lot of times is they'll make Valpolicella wine from the grapes that I mentioned, mainly the Corvina, and then they will bottle Amarone, make it and bottle it, then they will ferment the Valpolicella on the leftover dregs of Amarone and do a second fermentation. It really adds a lot of body, a lot of flavor, a little more ABV, and it is really good. And what's driving me crazy is the other style that I like so much that is made in the same style as Amarone, dried and everything, just a little different area and a little different grape. And for some reason, I can't think of the name. Um, I think of it in the middle of the video, I'm going to yell it out. It's under my Italian red play, this stuff. Three of my favorite Italian wines. Let's get into it. This is a DOC, right? See it? Can you see it? It's in blue. There it is. It's hard to see. Uh, that's just a designation by the government. Um, kind of designates um, the area where it's grown. It just that designates some rules. It's a very good wine when it's DOC. DOCJ is higher, but DOC is still a very good quality wine. Here is the color. This wine is 13.5% alcohol by volume. 
what a rich nose, a rich nose, I'll describe it, but it's beautiful. <sighs> Immediately it was earthy. It's been open for a few days. It's got some air to it. But it was uh, earthy. And then immediately followed by a beautiful bouquet of fruits. A lot of blackberry type smell. And a violet type smell of floral and fruit with the earthiness. That's a nice balance. When you have the fruitiness, floral, and the earthiness really balancing that out. I don't know if I can catch it. I'm so damn mad. I can't think of the name of that. <laughs> so much stuff going. All right. Damn it. Let's give her a taste. We'll do an acclimation sip. Then we'll go out for the kill. You know what's cool? It's so 2018. Um, they tell you actually the grapes. The, the grapes I mentioned, the four were in this grown in this area at this vineyard. But what this is made up is 70% Corvina and 30% Rondinella. And Danella, just Danella, is a family name. It's not my last name, but people in my family are named Danella. Now that is a beautiful balance between the acid, the acidity, the juiciness, the tannin, and the fruit. Well balanced. Very well balanced. Make sure you decan it. I don't have to decan it because it's been open like two days. But um, decant, this one's important. So it's starting to soften up and it's becoming real balanced. And those tannins are starting to mellow out as the air has been hitting it. Now you have this with any kind of dish with fat in it. Cheesy dish. Uh, you know, meat. Anything with fat. Sausages. That coats your tongue and that will actually kill any um, of the tannin. And just make it smooth as glass. That tannin's in there. It does give it a little bite does help balance it. I like it a little bit. I don't want it over time. It's like over um, uh, hoppy beer. You know, too much. It can be ridiculous. But you want it in there. But what it does, not only gives it structure, it helps it age. Uh, it's a natural antioxidant as well for the wine and for you and me. Oh, yeah. That, um, it's really good. It's, a, it's just blackberry. The earthiness I would describe as, as you know, oh, not wet leaves, just brown leaves that fall off the tree. You ever crush them up, smell them, or cut the grass and get that smell of those leaves? It's not a bad smell. It's got tobacco, leather type stuff, almost a soil type smell or taste to it even. Um, but that's okay. That's good stuff. Especially when it's balanced by fruit. A lot of good blackberry fruit in this. And the acid, a little bit of the tannin, the floral smell. There's a perceived, it's dry. There's a perceived sweetness because of the, the amount of fruit, fruitiness up front. That's it's all mixing in. It's it's going over the tongue. So it's very interesting. It's very nice. I like it a lot. It's one of my favorite styles. All right. I said Amarone. Paso. Oh, son of a gun. I have to look at my own damn playlist. It's going to pop my head as soon as I turn the video off. Oh, man. Oh, well. Thank you for being here. Don't forget to sub. See you on the next one. And I'm making this deal lately. Whereas if you subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share it, you know, do something to help the channel. I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you the next 10 videos free. You just get right on this channel. You watch them for nothing.